Today's video is going to be a little different. I'm going to be using some screen uh, capture software. This one's called ShareX. It's something I came across when I did a bit of a search. It's apparently free, so you know, yay for that. But for the video itself, I came across these booklets that I really wanted to get my hands on. The only problem is they weren't, you know, you couldn't just simply take them. So instead what I've done is I've scanned a lot of them in using a flatbed scanner and the issue is that when you scan in a piece of paper from a book or booklet or whatever you generally get bleed through, you get the colour of the paper if it's not pure white and some other nasties. So how do you remove that? Well I spent a long time trying to figure this out and because now I believe I have it down to a key I'm going to show you. Anyway, I'm going to first close this because it's not neat or minimize it. And I'm going to be using Photoshop today. Now you can do this in GIMP. There are different methods, but basically any photo editing software with some advanced functions can do this, as long as you have the options that you need. So to begin with, naturally you'd want to go to File and Open, but that's not going to help us. So what we have, and I should have shown this before, are these scanned pages. Now I'm in Australia so it might not be familiar to you. If you work for Telstra this might be familiar to you but who knows. Or Telecom. I forget the original name of this company. Anyway. So this is their sort of like maintenance books for... Well you can pretty much guess that's definitely not being utilized today. You might find this in a museum but you wouldn't find it today, that's for sure. <laughs> well, at least publicly to use. So, taking a look at these thumbnails, I'm not going to do all of this because it's going to take a while and you probably don't want to sit here for a whole hour or more. Anyway, I'm going to try page the first page or the cover, page one or page two, whatever you call it. This list is page three, page 11 and page 12. This has a general sort of overview of like little problems you're going to come across. Uh, I'll try to show you another technique that also helps if you've got multiple pictures on one page that may cause problems. So now let's get these in. Now there are two ways you can do this, like I was saying before. One, you can open them individually, make the changes and then export it or save it as a new picture. That'll take a very long time. So another way to do it is to load all the files, all the pages in as separate layers in Photoshop. So you have one document but you have all the pages. And I'm going to do that now. And I always thought you could just go file, open, multiple, no. What you need to do is you need to go down to scripts under the file menu and then load files into stack. That threw me to be honest and the first time I was a bit sort of weird. At this point I'm going to go to browse. Now you're going to want to locate your files but because I've already opened this up and had a bit of a play around it load straight to here. So I'm going to go one. Now I'm going to hold down the control key. This is important if you're in Windows. Now if you're in Mac or whatever other operating system, you're going to have to know how file navigation works in your environment. If you don't, well, look it up. Page two, page three for pure text, page 11 and page 12. So I'm happy. Those are the pages I'm going to want to edit. Whereas Normally I just go control A and select everything. Now I'm going to click on OK. Just wait for it to load up and as you can see we've got our five pages here or five pictures. And I'm going to click on OK. And when you do scan these in you want to try to make sure that you get them straight but they're not going to always be straight so sometimes you may have to do it manually. With Photoshop Extended you have this option up here, this little ruler which is really good for trying to get the page straight and I'll try to show you my technique once everything's loaded. Okay, so it's loaded. Now you need to understand that depending on how powerful your computer is, this is an old Core 2, so it's going to be quite slow in comparison to other software. Now the first thing I need to do is I need to rotate this image so the top of the page is actually at the top instead of being at the bottom. And I believe it's image Yes, it's image rotation, and I'm going to go 180. And we're done. And I'm going to say, okay, that's good. I'm going to hide it. And, ooh, 
they all seem to have turned the right direction, which is what we want. Okay. And I'm going to say that's probably not going to... Anyway, we've got what we wanted. Now, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enlarge the zoom. So down here on the bottom left-hand side, you've got these like 16.67. I'm going to enlarge that to about 25%. And I'm a lot more comfortable with this size. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the selection tool. And I'm going to go for the rectangle. You might be confused why, but we need to. Now what you want to do is you want to have the same size page for each file in the book. You don't want to have different sizes, it can cause that. This is where the bleed through comes in handy because we can generally see, well okay, so that's the text. And we can tell that this down here is going to be one corner, down here can be one corner, down up here is going to be another corner, and over here is going to be another. And if we try to include those numbers, we'll probably have it a little higher than what it should be, but whatever. So I'm going to start at the bottom right hand corner. I'm going to go all the way up until I include those numbers. And I'm going to include that ETS down at the bottom left hand side. Move it over a little bit and let go. And I'm going to just reposition it so I have a little bit of legroom on each side of this text here. So that's important. Now this may be a little too tight, but that should be able to encompass everything in the page, which is what I want. Now at this point, I'm going to go, I'm going to copy it. You can copy it using the menu, which is edit and then copy. However, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, which is something you should learn if you want to really get through this, which is control C. And I'm going to do that now, control C. So now it's been copied. I've copied this layer, which is what I want. Then you can go to file and new or control N, which is I'll do that now, control N. Now the parameters to what I selected, which is this in here, the settings are going to be in here, which is exactly what we want, which is really useful in Photoshop. And I can click on OK. And now you can go edit and you can go paste or you can just go control V, which is a standard, you know, copy and paste thing. OK, that's in. Now I'm going to zoom in close. I'm going to zoom this into about 50% from the bottom left hand corner. And that gives me a much closer look. So I can see that I have everything and if you look up here between where the toolbar starts and the text is it gives you a pretty good indi indication that this page is straight so we don't have to worry about aligning it or anything which is good anyway I'm going to take myself onto page 2 and I'm going to do that now what we have here is this box is out of alignment so you can see we've got this corner up here, we've got nothing down here, and we've got a picture of this old telephone. So I'm going to click down on the left mouse button and I'm going to drag this around until I encompass what I believe is the page. And I'm going to say that's what I want. And then I'm going to go control C on the keyboard again. I'm going to come back to here and I'm going to go control V. And now in Photoshop it's automatically going to create a new layer, but that's not the phone box. So I've made a mistake here and I'm going to show you what that mistake is and I did this on purpose. It's something that will occur now and then so you've got to keep an eye on to what you're doing and it's always a good idea to double and triple check your work otherwise you screw up it can be horrible. So if you come over here to where the, uh, the right hand side where the layers are you can see that I've got the first layer selected but I have the second layer visible. That would only, well it didn't actually copy it because the copy command wouldn't work, but if it did work it would still copy well, either nothing or the front page because it's, anyway, it's just how Photoshop works. So you've got to make sure that you click on the new layer, and I'll just turn off the screen behind me. Now we can go Control c on the keyboard again, and then we can come back to this file, uh, this 
version of all this and we can go control V and now I've got the phone book uh, the, the phone booth sorry as we can see we can see the front cover in the background we've got the phone in the front which is exactly what we want and to me that looks pretty much is it straight? No. No, that's off tilter. So this is where I get to show you how to use this little ruler. I'm going to click on it. Now usually you'd see the eyedropper tool. If you have Photoshop extended, you'll have this function. Well, Photoshop 6 extended, sorry. If you've got standard Photoshop, you're not going to have this function. And you're going to have to use uh, free transformation. But that's a tool you'll have to look up. I won't be showing you how to use this. I haven't used it myself all that often. So I'm going to select the rule tool, the ruler tool, sorry. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say, I'm going to take this bottom of this I and I'm going to drag it over to the bottom of this N in roughly the same position and let go. And then I'm going to go up to the top center where it says straighten layer and I'm going to click on that. And if you notice the page shifted a little bit. So now when I look at that it should be almost straight which is what I want so that to me looks a little better now this honestly in this situation not a hundred percent necessary but when you got a page that's really off tilter this really helps just to be aware of it so I'm going to go back to my other file and I'm going to view the third page which this one looks like it may be more out of and I made that mistake so I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to hit on clear now you can just simply go over here and select the uh, tool again but you can just hit M and that will take you back to the tool itself as you can see it's selected and all I had to do was press the M key on the keyboard and as before I'm going to align this uh, selected area until I'm happy that I've encompassed all of the actual page of what I want and then I'm just going to simply go control C again and I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to go control V again now when you look at this this page isn't aligned properly as you can see here you can see more of the text over here you can see a lot less that means this page isn't aligned properly and while it's not really in a sort of horrible state it's still something I'm going to try to fix and it's at this point where we get a little bit more control over how we can make everything look. So for instance, we've got this uh, in over here. And over here, we've got this A, which is good. It gives us a much sort of broader range to help straighten the page up. So I'm going to click under the I, drag it all the way to one of the bottom of the A and let go. And then I'm going to click on straighten layer again. And as you can see, it just rotated it a little bit for me automatically. And it looks perfect. And this is going to cause me to become obsessive compulsive if I don't fix every single page. Really great to kill time when you're stressed. But, yeah. And again, this actually looks like it's in a pretty good spot. So I'm going to select M and I'm just simply going to drag it down a little bit. Drag it to the left a little bit. And then I'm going to go control C and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go control V. And we have a pretty much straight page. So obviously I did this great properly when I was scanning it in. So that's something you're going to want to do. Ooh, no, so I've tilted a little. When you're scanning these in, you're going to want to try to make sure that you get it as straight as possible while including the actual page. Yep, this is definitely off tilter. So I'm going to hit the rule tool again, which if we go back over here, we can see that it's I, but it's selected, so I don't have to worry. I'm going to go from F, and I'm going to go to the H in the. And just like there, and straighten layer. And to me, that looks much better. And then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to do the last page that I imported. And I'm going to click on the M key on the keyboard, move this into place so it's just perfect. I'm going to go control C. I'm going to come back over here, control V. And then I'm going to check to see that I actually have it in line. And yes, it appears to be in line, 
which is great. Hmm, pardon me. Now we've got these pages in, however, we still have this background. You can still print this out and use it, but you're going to have you know, double the bleed through, which is going to look horrible. Well, you can print this out, or you can just save it to your computer and you know, read it off your uh, tablet or whatever you want to use your phone. So now we've got that done. How do we how do we fix this up? How do we make it look nice? Well, I'm going to go back to the first page and I'm going to say I don't want this sharpied out uh, text here. I don't want that. I see like this little nick here, nick over here, you know, stuff that gives the page character. But I want to have this making it look as if it's brand new. At which point, because we've got layer one selected and it's the only layer that's visible, you want to double check that you have that, otherwise you'll get some weird errors. I believe it's layer, no, image, adjustments and levels. And levels already comes with a shortcut, which is control L. And until I figure out how to copy layer masks, this... So I'm going to click on levels. Now I'm also going to have a pen ready because I want to take down these settings. So under output levels, you've got this weird chart here. Watch what happens when I click on this right hand slider and drag it over. Ooh. Ooh. It's there. It's gone. It's there. It's gone. It's there. It's gone. Yeah, anyway, you get the idea. So I'm going to say that looks good. For the most part, I have everything removed. I've got a few little nicks that are sort of bothering me. And I'm going to say, let's go 175. Just to sort of flatten it out. I'm going to take that number down. So 175. Now, if you manage to do the scan, all the scans at once, you'll be able to use the same settings, preferably for each uh, page. However, occasionally you may need to change it. Things like uh, pictures will also cause you issues. So I'm hoping to be able to show you how to get yourself around that later on. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit darker. So I'm going to take this left hand slider and I'm going to slide it back until we get some nice blacks, which that's what I'm looking for. Black, when it comes to text, is really good. And I like this blackness. So I'm going to say, that's perfect. And I will say, take it back to 60. So I want to have the blackness set to 60 and I'm going to have the white side set to 175. So I'm going to note down that 60. And I'm going to say, great. I have that done, I'm happy with it, I'm going to click OK. And while you write it down, is in case you forget halfway through, you really don't want to start screwing everything up. It's at this point we want the erase tool uh, over here, but I'm going to hit just E. And I'm going to take you out, I'm going to take you out, I'm going to, no, that's part of my screen, I'm going to take you out, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to... Now, I am using the Erase tool, so I can take you out. These stars are a part of the original document. I'm pretty sure that's probably not, but I'm going to leave it. And I'm going to take out this uh, MS-52. Done. And I'm going to say, you as well, you as well, you as well. And I... Oh, that last one was a part of my screen. You really should keep your screen clean. I need to get a proper screen cleaner. Anyway, that's the first page done. So that's the cover. That's that's going to be what we're going to try to emulate with every other single page. And say if you've got 20, you've got 40, you've got 100. You can use special you, you, uh, dedicated software for this. I tried. It was terrible. I decided not to go with it because it just screwed. It did work, but the image quality was just shocking. Now I'm going to hide the first layer or the cover page and I'm going to enable this one and I'm going to say well okay so in this we have the photo of this telephone and as you can see the symbol on here I've got to make sure that the layer is selected. Don't forget that. I'm going to go okay. Uh, let's bring up the layers which I'm going to go control and L. I'm going to drag, instead of dragging it back, I can just simply select the numbers 
and enter in the 175 and I'm going to say okay that's not enough because I can still see a little bit of bleed through in that image so I'm going to drag it back to about 160 almost and 155 and I'm going to click on OK. And while I can still see some distortion in that picture of the telephone, I'm going to say that looks perfect. You're not always going to be able to do this, mind you. Sometimes you'll fail miserably, but once you have that, I'm going to say, well, OK, I don't want to get that photo any darker, but I want the text to be dark. So how can I do that? Well, this is where the selection tool comes back in again, or the triangle thingy. I'm going to go... Actually, I'm going to show you how to do something else first. So I'm going to select this top part, and then I'm going to make sure that this is selected, and I'm going to go down here. And then I'm going to bring up the layers again, uh, the level, sorry, with the Control and L. And watch what happens when I start kicking around with this slider. Now, you see that? If you have multiple pictures on one page, and you want them to be set to a specific uh, brightness level or level, you can do that here. Now, if I hit cancel, because I don't want to change that, and I go to select, and I go to inverse, which you can take here, it's uh, shift control I. So I inverse the selection. And this is the fun part. When I go back to layers again, and I start messing around with the slider, everything else but what has been selected is changing. So that's another little trick. Anyway, I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to deselect both and I'm going to have to zoom out to 25%. I'm going to select this whole thing. So once the telephone is selected, I'm going to then go to select and inverse the selection. So that means the whole page is now going to be getting the edit. I'm going to go back up to 50%. I'm going to bring up the levels. I'm going to scroll up to the top and I'm going to drag this whoop, the other way. In fact, I'm just going to simply punch in the number 60 there. That way it's exactly like the uh, cover page. And then I'm going to go back to here and click that. Now I've got this wee bit of gunk up here. I'm guessing that's the numbers from the Sharpie from the cover page and I'm just going to erase it using the E key. Okay, so that's come out acceptable. It looks nice but it's acceptable. And we're going to go to a purely text page. Now, unfortunately, I can't really see anything I'm going to have to erase. So this is probably going to be a very easy one to do. I'm going to go Control L. I'm going to punch in the numbers again. So 175. And that looks perfect. At which point, instead of having to click OK, I can just punch in the 60 again. Makes the text nice and dark, which is what I want. I want dark. And I can click on OK. And apart from the artification, so if I was to zoom in, doo, 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 you can see that there's some, you're not going to get it perfect. This was printed using printers from the 1970 era, well, at least the early 1970s, late 1960s. It's not going to be 100% perfect. It's not going to be like a laser printer or something that's been photocopied where if you did that, look a lot better. At which point you could probably just use a ORC or text recognition software and solve that completely yourself. But anyway, I'm going to punch that back down to 50%. I'm going to bring it back up and I'm going to say that page is for the most part perfect. I like how black it is and I'm going to say I don't like that, that red dot. I do not like it at all. Now I'm going to change this uh, size, I'm probably going to drop it down to about 10. Now you can use the slide rule if you want, or I can't 
pronounce the actual two things but uh, on general keyboard you got your P key and on the right hand side you got these other two keys and what they'll do is they'll increase and decrease the size of the erase tool so I can punch that out and I'm going to just take a couple of shots and get rid of that red mark and in this case black and red doesn't mix actually black and red really shouldn't be mixing at all but you get the idea I'm going to take out the dot above the coin and fingers crossed it's going to remain like that Ooh, there's another little dot there I'm going to get rid of you can be as picky as you want with this as you feel like layer 4 now this is going to be as you can see that the actual schematic here for this telephone box is quite dark already all our text is light so we could make this really dark or we could just bump it up to where we want which is what I'm going to be doing so I'm going to go control L I'm going to knock it back to 175 I'm going to click on OK now to me that schematic is perfect and because I still have the erase tool enabled so E I'm going to pop you off I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to say get rid of a bit of this now if you really want it to be obsessive compulsive we can replace that uh, the the or the with another the or the all we're going to do is find it ah so here we go uh, delay working so if I go select and I go click and drag and I go control control oops edit undo control C control V and we just created a new layer nope so I'm gonna click on this tool up here which is the move tool and we've got the now you can change the opacity if you wanted to but obviously we've just fixed the mark so I've shown you how to replace words in a <laughs> anyway looks a whole lot better so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the schematic and I'm going to say I'm going to do it from about here and down and as before I showed you I'm going to go to select inverse Control L to bring up the levels and I'm going to bump this up to 60 and hit enter that's not really dark is it uh. oh, let's try it again Control L hmm it's not working so I'm going to go that I'm going to undo that and I'm going to go select inverse control L and hmm anyway I'll punch it in 60 and hit enter and I'm going to say I give up it looks visible it looks everything it's well it, it looks okay not exactly exactly how not exactly how I'd want it but now another thing is you'll notice that we've got these two layers so as you can see we've got the and then when we do that we want to merge these two layers together so I'm going to select both of them make sure they're both visible and I'm going to click on merge layers And I'm going to rename this layer 4. And I'm going to have to be happy with that. And I'm going to hide it. And now I'm going to bring up the last one. I'm going to do the same again as we did before. And let's see if we, whether or not we can actually clean this up. So we're going to go Control L. Hmm. Control L. Okay. 
wasn't selected. So now I've selected the layer, control L, and it comes up, which is what we want. And I'm going to go 175. And I will say that's nice. That schematic is already nice and dark. So I'm going to click on OK. I am going to select the schematic. I am then going to say Control Shift I to inverse the selection. As you can see up here in the history window. So I did what I wanted. I'm going to go Control L again and I'm going to try to bump this up to 60. And that's it. I would say that we are done. I'm going to just deselect that selection. Now, now we've done this, we need to export it. So how do we do that? Well, turns out we can do one of two things. We can either, pardon me, uh, export them individually, each layer, or we can do it as a script again. This is what's nice because scripts are fun. Scripts are irritating and completely convoluted the way I see it, but Let's just do with what Adobe said now. I've deselected, uh, sorry, I've hidden layer five. There's no real reason to have it lit up or anything. Now, the second thing I'm gonna do is close down this first document, which is all the original imports, just for memory. I mean, I've got a old laptop here. It's not exactly gonna be a, uh, a beast. I'm gonna go down, and no, I'm not, not gonna do export, but I'm gonna go back down to scripts and I'm going to go export layers to files and, and I'm going to get this menu up so I have currently have it set up for my last sort of masterpiece and that's not what I want I'm going to go to the folder where these are kept and I'm going to copy sorry I'm going to click up here in this toolbar and then I'm going to copy the actual address and then I'm going to be able to paste it in here and then I'm going to copy the title and I'm going to paste the title there which is going to be good now you're going to want to do that so you keep all the information I'm going to bump off transparency and I'm going to bump off trim layers trim layers is going to turn around and cut away anything that's invisible so all these little uh, grey and white squares what would happen is that it, the uh, when it goes through and exports each file, it would cut them off so they wouldn't be there, but no, I want them there. I want to have every single image exactly the same size, same dimensions and everything. And transparency, well, that I found causes problems. Now, I like to use the PNG 24. You can use PNG 8 if you want. It's going to be your decision. If you try uh, JPEG and you print this out, I found that for some reason all the pictures would come out as squares. I wasn't happy about that. But anyway, enough said. I'm going to create a new folder in here and I'm going to call it old. I'm then going to select all these images and dump them in there. There. Now I can go run. Depending on how many pages there are, this is going to take a while. Don't freak out how all the layers just disappeared. That's not going to affect what we're doing or what's been done. They're all come back as you'll see it's doing its thing. And it's taking its time. So there's one. There's two. Now if I open up the folder again, we can see that it's going through and creating the files for us automatically. You may want to use a uh, file renamer or something or go through and do it yourself, depending on what you want to do with this. I mean, if you want to turn this into a PDF, you wouldn't have to really worry about renaming it. Just make sure that when you import it, it's imported in its uh, okay state. And that's going to tick me off. So above Amplify, there's a little dart. Oh, and done. So that was quick. But if I close this down and I open it up again, we can see that we have the pages done. So if we zoom in on this, 
we can still see a little bit of artification coming through, and uh, sorry, a little bit of bleed through coming through from the other side, but you can't make them perfect without losing more details, which honestly is just depressing. But now let's take a look at something here. So both were scanned in as PNGs, however, if I come back here, I'll go into here and wait for it to load. Now these should both be the same page. So details, details. So it has in fact shrunken the size of the actual page, which doesn't matter. But what's important is that we import, we, we got a decent sized file. So in other words, 50, about 15 megabytes and we've been able to drop it down to 890 kilobytes. I've usually found that the uh, output file once I've finished is between like one to two megs at the most, which is really good. As you can see, the pixel density has dropped. So, you know, there's the size and that's it. That's my little secret. That's what I discovered. Now, when you're going through this process, you're going to want to make sure that you actually save as you go. So file, save as, and then save periodically or save as and just create backups as you go. Don't turn around and not save the document when you're working on something more than a few pages, like uh, four pages, you probably won't. But you also, if you save the uh, PSD or the Photoshop file, and you need to go back there and make a change to it later on, you can later on down the track as long as you keep it. Whereas if you just output the files and you delete the originals, you say, for instance, miss a page or you need to get something from an old page from one of the original scan pages and the originals are gone, well, you're going to be stuffed. Keeping the original scans is going to be important in case down the track. You can delete it if you choose to, but Anyway, I've rambled on about this for too long. This video is definitely going to be too long, even just for these five pages. I'm going to call this done. I'm going to say yibbity yibbity, and that's going to be it.